uh, this course is wireless communication and networking and I'm the lab instructor. My name is Salman. And firstly, I'll introduce you myself. Uh, my name is Salman. I'm a PhD student at Intelligent Mobile Computing Lab. And uh, my lab is located at uh, 1008 in the high tech building. So uh, you can please send me an email if you have any concern related to the lab. It's a preferred way to contact me, uh, either this one or this one. So if you use this one, this will, this will be much better because this is my lab email and it's already, it is always on, on my desktop. So you can contact me on this one. Uh, in case if I'm not reachable to this one, you can please uh, send me a cacao or WhatsApp message, but I'll be surely reachable with this email. So just send me an email if you have a, any problem and you can, we can have um, a meeting too if uh, there is a critical problem and then we can solve it. So regarding the grade distribution, uh, there will be some 10% of assignment from the labs. So uh, Sabina, who is the uh, TA, she will be grading it. And also uh, the midterm and the final exam, it might contain around 20% of the lab material. So don't worry, it will not be that much difficult, but yeah, still it will contain something from the lab. And the attendance is very important. So if you are absent, then there will be minus 10% of the mark. So you can lose as much as minus 10% of your mark. So please do attend the lab. And if you attend the lab, you can ask me the questions and I can answer you. And of course, I will also upload this video on the uh, your portal, but still you need to attend the lab because this is the direct interaction and you can ask me questions. So. Uh, let me first introduce you to the all the to all the labs that we are going to cover in this course, and then we will come to this first lab, uh, and we will do the some tasks here, and I'll also show you how to install the MATLAB. I'll also give you a brief review for the MATLAB. So the lab one will cover the installation method, and also the oh, let me take this pointer or some other one. Uh, the lab one, it will, uh, I'll show you how to install the MATLAB. And the purpose of this course is to show you the wireless communication models. So when you send a signal, how the signal is traveled from one block to the other block or from one point to the other point. And for example, you are talking on your phone and you are speaking, your speech or your voice signal, it is converted into digital signal and then it travels to, through uh, some stages or through some lot of uh, um, processes. So we are going to cover all those things. What happens to your voice when it, co when it is traveling from one, uh, from one part to the other part or from the calling person to the called person? So uh, to do that, firstly, I will, um, this course is based on MATLAB. So I'll first introduce you to the MATLAB. The first two lab will cover the uh, detail, how to use the MATLAB uh, and how the signal looks like. What are the signals? What is the difference between the continuous signal and the discrete signal? In other words, what is, what is the difference between the digital signal and the analog signal? Then we will see various types of signal. The sig there are a lot of types. Some signal has some shapes and some signal, they don't have shapes. They are very random in nature. So we will see them. And then I'll also show you how to plot the uh, signals or anything. So MATLAB is very good tool for plotting and uh, you might need it for your future as well. So I'll show you all those things in the first two labs. Then we will move to the actual thing, which is the end-to-end -end communication model. So in the end-to-end -end communication model, that, that will start from the lab number three. The first model, it is the basic model. So here, firstly, we will see what is happening to your signal when, you are, when it is 
uh, transmitted from the transmitter and then it is received at the receiver and what kind of degradation occurs when it is traveling from transmitter to the receiver. So we will be covering uh, uh, the, in the lab three, we will be covering how the signal is generated and then how do we take the sample from the signal and then how do we quantize it? So don't worry about these terms when we are doing these labs, I'll explain everything in very detail. So don't worry about it for now. And then the, in the part two of this lab, end-to-end -end communication. So I'll be starting, for example, signal generation. This is the person who is transmitting the signal or the person who is dialing the number of the other person. So he, when you are talking, you are generating the signal. Okay, so this signal is generated. And when you say hello, how this hello is received on the other part of the, per, the other part to the other person who are you dialing? So uh, we are going to study when you say hello, that why signal is generated. Then we have to take, we don't want to convey all that hello. We want to take the sample of that hello so that to reduce the size and then transmit it. And then we will quantize it. And then in the, the part two of this lab, we will encode the message. Encode is for several purpose. One is for the security purpose. You encode the message so that the other person cannot hear your voice, right? So you encode your message and then you modulate your message. Modulation, modulation is something like you are traveling from ancient to soul and you are going by foot. It will take a lot of your efforts, right? To reach Seoul when you are going by foot. But if you take a car or a train, you just sit, you don't lose your energy and you save your time and you reach very fast. So this, this is how the modulation do. You, your signal is a low frequency signal and you superimpose it on a higher frequency signal. So your low frequency signal is riding on your high frequency signal and then it travels to your destination. And then in the part three, we will study channel. So what is the channel? Channel is a kind of road. So if there is a road, your car can move there. But if there is no bridge between the, if there is a sea and there is no bridge, then the car can stop and it cannot go to the other part of the sea or the other part. So the channel means that you have the way to communicate. You have a road to where your vehicle or your car can move. And when your signal is moving from this uh, sending part to the destination part, there are a lot of degradation phenomena. Degradation means your signal is distorted uh, or it get corrupted. So because there are buildings, there are people moving, there are cars, and when your signal are, is going wirelessly, the signal is striking off the buildings, it is striking off the cars, it is striking off a lot of things. So because of these reflections, your signal becomes weaker and weaker. So at the receiver part, you need filters and amplifiers. What is the purpose of the filter? Filter will remove the noise from your signal and it will gives you the clean signal. And that clean signal is able from the clean signal, you can recover the information. You can hear what hello was sent from the transmitter. And then at the lab six, we will cover the demodulation. So demodulation means the low frequency was riding on a high frequency signal, right? But at the receiver side, you have to take the low frequency from the higher frequency. You have to decouple these two signals. So the higher frequency is there, and then you have to take out the low frequency from there. And then there is a decoding. So the signal was encoded for security purpose or, and also for accuracy because the, uh, there are some we will study it later, but when you are transmitting your digital signals, the bits are repeated so that when, if one of the bit is corrupted at the receiver, the other bit will be at least correct. So the, the, you also send the, you also do the encoding for channel encoding for correctly receiving the signal. To, re to reduce the errors. So to do that, you have to recover the original signal from the bits. Okay, what is the bits? Actually, when you are sending a signal, when you say hello, 
this halo is basically compression decompression of error and it is some random signal generated and it is continuous in nature so your signal is always analog but your machine only understand zero and one so the signal is converted into bits right so any signal that you go, are going to transmit through the digital communication system it has to be converted to zero and ones so decoding means that those zero and one that is coming from the transmitter it has to be converted again to those analog signal so we will also cover the decoding part and then we will cover the signal reconstruction so and the signal reconstruction we want to recover that hello again right so from sender we transmitted an analog signal and then at the receiver we should receive almost the same as uh, the transmitter this receive a signal which is which seems like which seems similar like the transmitted signal so this will be the uh, finishing part of a basic communication model where, where you can see how your signal was generated and how stages by stages it is traveling to the receiver and at the receiver how you are going to recover that signal now we will after this after covering all this system after understanding the signal then we will go to a bit advanced level and that is the lte systems so in the lte systems that is your 4g uh, that you are currently using now that part we will be seeing how the bits are generated and then fec encoder okay don't worry about the fec encoder for now when we are doing it i will explain you all the details about the fec encoder it is the channel encoder and the lab at uh, we will be so again it is stages by stages after the fec it will given to the interleaver interleaver again taking care of the signal so that less and less error is generated so it reduces the lesser the sorry it reduces the errors and then you are giving it to the modulation part and again modulation is the same th the same thing that i explained you earlier but in the previous lab we are just simply using a bpsk modulation or very simple kind of modulation but here we will see different kind of modulation so do you need a high speed data to transmit so the higher speed data transmission means that you have to do some high level modulation for example if you want to send something uh, at 2 megabit per second then let, it's just an example you can use for example bpsk but let's say you want to transmit something at uh, 50 mbps then maybe at that case you should use the 16 quam so to increase the throughput you need to increase the modulation okay but to do that you have to there is some trade off when you are increasing the uh, modulation when you are increasing the from b to 16 from two bits you, you are going to send 16 it means that more bits are going to uh, going to travel through that small channel so they will be colliding with each other and they will be uh, corrupting each other and there will be more error produced so the more you are increasing the speed the more will be the error produced so we will cover also this part and then at the lab and the lab 9 which is the part 3 of the lte we will see different types of channel and as i told you the signal is not going straight from all there is some there there can be the case that the transmitter and receiver can see each other this is the transmitter antenna this is the receiver antenna and they can see each other and the signal is directly traveled like that and there is called line of sight communication but this is not the case because when you are at home in your room uh, you are receiving the call from someone so you can never see that person who is calling you right so the signal is moving from uh, base station to base stations and finally it is striking of the buildings the trees the people and then finally from your window or somewhere it reaches to your phone so all these degradation phenomena that is happening to your to your signal that is just because of the physical layer or the channel that you are using right so we will also study this channel and we will be using we will study two model of the channel one is the awgn and the other is the relay channel and then we will study the demodulation part so how the signal is demodulated and then since we had interleaved the signal we also have to deinterleave the signal we had 
then the encoding um, at, the, at the transmitter. So we have to decode again. And finally, the 12th level will be the last layer. We will recovering the bit stream. And the bit stream, after the bit stream, we will also see how much error occurred when we transmitted the signal and when the error was received. And that is called something bit error rate. Uh, I'll try to cover these labs, okay? Uh, I'll make it as simplified as possible to, in order for you people to understand it, the whole concept. And um, MATLAB is a very good tool for that because in MATLAB you will find the functions that can do the most of the parts. So you don't have to write the code for each and everything. We will be using those pre-existing functions and then we will be giving it the input and we will be getting the output from there. So we will, uh, I'll show you um, how to use those things and we will slowly go towards. So our goal is to study all these 12, but even if we uh, understood 75% uh, of these lab, I hope you will have enough knowledge of the wireless communication and in future you can design kind of models like this. So this is the uh, wireless introduction and let me quickly go through the uh, installation part. So for the installation, um, you have to just type the MATLAB on your Google and it will direct you towards the mathworks.com. So yeah. do you want to follow me when I'm doing it? Okay, okay, I, okay, sure. So just uh, type the MATLAB on the Google and if I'm going so fast, you can please tell me to stop and I can wait for you, okay? So once you type the MATLAB, you can see this MATLAB uh, website. It will, uh, you can see the MathWorks uh, website and you just simply click on it. So I'm using the uh, MacBook, but if you are using the Windows based laptop or the Linux, so the, the procedure is almost similar. Just uh, follow what I'm doing, okay? And can you see this get MATLAB on the top? So just click on it. And then, yeah, just scroll it down and you will see the latest MATLAB that is available. So the current MATLAB that is available there is 2020B. You can click on the downloads and then again, you can click on the downloads. So the good part is the INHA has the free licensing for from the MathWork. So you can just simply put your email here. Uh, for example, I'm putting my email address and I'll just go to next. So use your INHA email, your username, uh, the, your student ID at the rate of inha.edu. So when you click on next, it will ask your password too and then put your password there. So this is my MATLAB portal and just to verify that it's you, uh, okay. You can see this, uh, this will be a newer name. So it's now showing MS, which is my name. Now it's, it depends on which operating system you are using. So I'm using the Mac operating system, so I will, download this one but if you're using the windows or the linux you should uh, install the corresponding uh, operating system so after this is done then you have to click on this one uh, i have already downloaded one so i will use the previous one now you will see something like this Here again, you have to give your uh, student ID and the ID which you just register. So, and your password. 
and then sign in and then click on yes and after that just click next it will check for your lessons and since i am already registered there so you will also see some number and uh, other stuff so you have to proceed and then it will show you some of your credentials confirm user yeah you are this user so you will again next where you want to install it so you can browse it to some other drive for example if you are using the windows you can browse it to d or e drive make sure you have at least uh, 20 gb of space available there so because this is a very heavy software it takes a lot of space so i would recommend to uh, direct this one browse it to any folder uh, any drive that has more space and then click on next so this class is still 12 30 right yeah 12 30. okay thank you is there anyone okay yeah finally i'm there and uh, i would recommend you to install everything so in future you may need some tools or something and if it is not there then you have to reinstall the matlab so let's do it once for all click on select all the top one and then proceed next and again click on next and then again so it requires 35.46 gb so you should have enough uh, space in your matlab uh, in your drive sorry you should have enough space available if you don't have this much space then it means that you cannot uh, install it in that case you can just customize it just install the basic version of the matlab which i showed you i clicked on select all in that case you should not click on the select all but I would like to go for this one, 35.46, and then I will just simply begin installation and then forget it because it will take almost two, day, two, two hours or three hours. So once it is completed, then you can simply type the MATLAB in your search bar and you can bring it to your a shortcut to your desktop. So it will take a lot of time. Now the MATLAB is installed on my other computer. So I'll go to that computer. I'll switch it, switch it to the other user. And I'll show you some basics of the MATLAB. And by that time, your MATLAB will also be installed. So let me switch my screen to the other computer. So can you see my screen now? Yeah. And you can also hear me clearly, right? Because I changed the computer. So I think there shouldn't be any, there might be any, some problem. Is it clear the voice? No problem. Okay, okay, good. So once you uh, open the MATLAB, it will looks like this. Uh, this is the, whole MATLAB screen and you will find a couple of things there. I'll first introduce you to each and every section and then we will go in details and I'll show you how all these things are, what all these things are. So this one, this place is showing your directory. The directory means the place where your current folder is open. So if you save if you are making a new script file or the, for example you when you are making a something dot c you have to save it in some directory right so this will show you all the related files its functions and everything in the matlab in this directory so this is the current folder and uh, 
for example, I'm in this directory. And when you click on any function, it will show you this brief description of that function that what is the function? What is, these are the input arguments and this is the function. Now, if you click on this one, it will show you the brief description. Description. So from here, if I click on this one, I can see there are four functions and each function has this, this, this input argument. So uh, if I'm using something, I require something and I have created some function, I can see it directly by clicking on any file that I may need, for example, index generator. And I just need to put this index generator here and use it. So you don't have to open it and then see, uh, scroll it down and then see, oh, is it there or not? So this is just for um, quick view to see something. And feature you might need the matrix file or the vector, you can click on it and it can also show you the smart, uh, the short description there. This is your command window. What is the good about MATLAB? MATLAB can instantly give you the answer of any variable that, that you input there. You don't have to run it. Uh, for seeing the answer. So for example, I am saying, uh, sorry, I'm using the wrong keyboard. <laughs> I am saying A is equal to three. And when I enter it, it shows me the A and it is having the value three. So I don't have to write it in the script window, but uh, I can simply check my answer here. So there might be something very complicated, for example, square root of 43 plus uh, nine square. So I want to see what is the answer of this one. So I don't have to run it. I simply write it and it will give me the answer right away. So here in the command window, you can see everything instantly. This is the workspace. So I used, currently I used two variables. Once I used A and then I used this thing. And since I didn't assign it to any variable, that's why it automatically assigned the answer variable to that and it will save the answer. And here you can see A contains three. I, I think it's too small, but still visible. And then the answer is equal to 87 point something. So here you can write something and all this workspace will contains all the variable value and you can see which variable has been assigned what value. Now let's come to this part, the tools part. I'll briefly, briefly go through it. You may not need all the tools or uh, uh, everything at this stage. You may need only particular things from here. Uh, so I'll introduce you to many of them uh, shortly, uh, very briefly, but later on, if you need to understand something, you have to Google it and you have to explore it more and more. So again, the home menu contain a uh, lot of things. Firstly, uh, I think, let me close everything because these are my script files here I have already worked on. So I don't want to show you something which is already there. Let's say we are opening a new, your MATLAB might look like this when you open it for the first time. So for that, um, you don't want to work here, right? This is a temporary window. The command window is always temporary. You cannot save this. Right? So you can say, for example, B is, uh, yeah, or B is equal to 67 and K is equal to five and all the although all the in the workspace all the variables are saved here but once you close it everything will be gone or once you type this command clear all again everything will be gone so if you want to save if you want to see all those things in the future you should write a script for that to write a script you have to open this one new script so there are two ways one you have to make, you are making a script uh, that is quicker and you write something, you run it and you see the answer. And the other one is the live script, which is this one. So clicking on this and then the live script. So here you can see everything. So I'll show you how, what is the, what the basic difference is. So in the script window, this one you have to both you have to save it first for example i want to save it with the uh, test one and also i want to save it with the test 
one. They are not conflicting because the extension is different. This is m and this is dot mlx. So the name is uh, def, the name. The extension is different, so you can save it in the uh, same uh, directory. Now I am writing, for example, a is equal to. Uh, I want to write something like it is an array, right? V in C or C plus plus or other languages you call it array. In MATLAB language, usually it is called a vector. So I am saying that I have a vector. From now on, I'll be calling it a vector one, three, six, eight, nine. So I have a vector which is a, and it it contains values a one three, six, nine, eight, and nine. Then I have an other vector, for example, B, and this contains 22, 44, 66, again, 22, and one, two, three, four, because the dimension should be similar. In the MATLAB, when you are doing something and then you're processing the errors, you, you should have the same dimension for both. So I assume that I have two values and then the uh, values are in A and B variables. Let's copy it and also paste it here. Now, if you want to run it here, it will be appear here. And I don't, I'll, I'll show you, you want to see it here or you don't want to see it here. So firstly run it and I want to show, I want to see it here. Oh, there is some diff. I think I should change the name. I should change the name for the second one or I should change the name for this one. So let me rename it. Where is my test? Okay, let me rename the test. For example, test 1A, just to avoid the conflict. So now there is no problem because when you execute it, it will, the executable file might be the same for the test 1.mlx and test 1.m. That's why I, I had the problem. So here you can see the answer directly. A is equal to 13689 and B is equal to 22, 44, 66, 22, and 56. And if you don't want to see the see it in the command window, just put a semicolon there and then run it. And then nothing will be seen here, but here you can see it. If you double click on this one, this is my A and I, it contains one, three, four, six, nine. And this is my B which contain this value, but I didn't see it here, right? But on the other hand, if you uh, are de dealing it in the MLX file, you simply run it and you can see the answer right away you can see a is equal to one three this one and b is equal to 2244. So is that clear? It's very simple. So I hope uh, it will not be a problem for you. From the new, you can open the script file. You may need functions. So it's too early to talk about function, but let me try to, under, uh, to explain it. Function, for example, the, the, this is the input arguments and this is the output argument and this is the function you want to add. For example, I want to make a add function and it is taking the input argument A and then the other argument B, sorry, this is the other argument B and let's say my output is, I'm having only single output and let's say it is result and I can say, the result is equal to a plus b, right? So this is my function. I just made a function and I have to save it here. And now I'm going to use this function. I will just copy it. I'll go to this one and I'll just simply put it here. And let's say my output variable is equal to C, right? So the C is taking the vector A and it is also taking the vector B and it will add up the elements. One will be added with 22, three will be added with 44, six will be added with 66. So when I run this one, I should see, because I'm not putting the semicolon, I should see the result. 
So you can see 22 plus 1, 23, 44 plus 3, 47. Now, this, will, this is my function and it is performing the operation. It is giving the output there and then you can see it here. So this was a very basic function, but you can do more than that, right? And then, um, yeah, I want to show you something like uh, interesting. For example, you want to plot it. For example, you want to plot the A and C. So I want to plot A and C. Uh, sorry, I want to plot A and B, right? So I, if you want to plot A and B, just run it and it will show you how the A and B is uh, looking like. So A is one, three, six, eight, nine, one, three, six, eight, nine, it will go up to nine and B is 22, 44, so it is and the Y axis. So the first thing that you write here, sorry, in the plot, the first thing you, you write here, it is always the X axis. And the second thing that you write here, it is the Y axis. And once you run the execute the plot function, then you can see uh, it will plot it. So you can see that at value number one, the answer the, there should be, it, it should be around 22. So if I put a marker here, you can say that X is equal to one, Y is equal to 22. At three, this is my three value, right? So if I put it here, X is equal to three and Y is equal to 44. So three is with 44. And likewise at X is equal to six with 66. So this is how you plot it. And if you want to see the difference between this one and this one, you will see in the left script, you will see it a bit differently. You will see everything here. See, so you can see what is A, what is B, what is C, and how is the plot? So everything you can see live. Uh, you don't have to wait for the execution and then it will show you. So sometimes you need the live script and sometimes you need the M script. It depends on your work and applications. Uh, is it clear? Is there anything I should re-explain? Yeah, please, can you speak it up? Can you please speak on the mic? I would like to know usage or efficiency of lab, lab editor. Okay, so the lab editor that uh, I told you, there, there is trade off. Um, it is sometimes slower uh, because it is showing you the result right away. So it has to show you A, it has to show you B, and it has to show you C, and then it has to plot you. So in that context, it is slower. It will be taking more time than the M because it is not showing you anything. It is just running, it is saving the values and the variables. And finally, if there is something which is really necessary to be visualized, then it, it is shown like in the separate window like this. Even if you click on here in, in this window, if you click on it, you can still see the same plot like that, uh, uh, that we saw earlier, but it is shown in the lab script here. So um, it is slower, but you can see all the details. This one, it is faster, but you cannot see all the details. So that is, that is kind of trade off between the two. Now it depends if you are using a very big um, you, you have a very big script and then you want to uh, see the output of specific plot uh, for specific answers and you have you need a lot of answers and you have to compare them. In that case, you need to use the live script. So live script will run, plot, uh, it will show you the result of each and every one and then you can compare them. But if you use the dot M, then in that way, it will be a bit complicated and it will not be so easy for you to compare the results and do all those stuff. So it's up to your application. And mostly I use the M, dot M file because it is faster. And sometimes if you are using too much loops or too much things inside the MATLAB, it becomes very really slower. So the mostly we need to write our code as efficiently as possible and we have to save the time. Sometimes you have to wait for two hours or three hours to get the answer or to get the result from the MATLAB. If your code is too heavy or there are a lot of loops or, or it is very computationally expensive. So is that the answer to your question?
Uh, someone is talking, but I cannot hear. Uh, is there any other question? Okay. So uh, then uh, open, for example, you have already some script here, saved there, and you want to open it. For example, I want to open this term. And here you can see all this thing will appear here. And then I can just simply run it. It is a very big code, so it will take a lot of time. And you will see this busy icon there. So in that, that case, it, show, it takes a lot of time if your code is very big. In this case, my code is around, yeah. Yeah, it's not that big, but still like 549 lines and there might be some uh, plots and things and there might be loops and other things. So it may take some time to simulate the whole code. Yeah, while well, this is being simulated, let's go to the other part. If you want to save it, uh, for example, this was the saved file. I just simply mm, clicked on the control S and it was saved. But in your case, you can uh, save it using this this one. And find file, for example, you, you need to find some file in that particular directory. So you can just type some file name and it will find it for you. But usually it's not a convenient way. You can directly go to that directory and for me, I can find it like that. Yeah, other important thing I should talk about. Okay, this this one is important, I think. Yeah, I, and before uh, one thing which is very, which you should use very commonly because if you are using a lot of plots and then you are running this your this code again and again then what will happen your previous plot will exist and the new plot will write it will just print on the top of it so it will make your figures more messy to avoid that you have to use these three lines clc clear all and close all so this will enable you to clear all the figures to clear your workspace to clear this window and to clear all the figures. And once when you're running this one, it will just start from the scratch. So you will not have any problem there. And one more thing, when you have a lot of plots, a lot of figures, and you want to separate them, you want to make sure that each figure is plotted differently and separately from the other plot, then you can simply write, uh, write something like this figure if I do R E and for example this is my figure number one and if you have the figure number two you can simply copy and then paste it here for example you have a figure number two and then I want to plot a versus the answer and if you have the figure number three I would like to also plot b versus the answer right so the x-axis will be b and c is my answer which is the output of the function and if you, uh, sorry, it has to be figure number three. And if you want to plot everything, then in that case, you can do something like this. This is my figure number four. And I will write, for example, A versus C, for example, and hold on, I'll show you what hold on means. B versus C and uh, a versus C, hold on, sorry, this is enough. A versus C. What the hold ons mean? Hold ons mean when you plot this figure, this should still be here, this figure should still be here, and you should plot the other figure on the top of it. So you can see this was my previous code. It took this much of time. And you can see some results from there. Uh, oops. Anyway, so uh, it's not meaningful for you, so I will leave it. Now, let, let's run this code. The first figure will be plot A versus B. The second figure will, this will be plotted versus this one. And the third figure will be plotted this versus this one. But I want to, to plot this versus this, and also in the same figure, B versus C. For that thing, hold on will work. So what hold on does, 
and the figure number four first a will it will plot a versus c and then there will be a hold on and then it will plot b versus c and if we run it you will see everything here uh i don't know how to remove this you cannot see it but i have some problem with seeing my window Mm. yeah i cannot see all the figures for example this is my figure number one this is my figure number two this is my figure number three and this is my figure number four so my figure number four contain uh, a versus b and it also contain b versus c so there are two plots together right so the plots are not meaningful at all you can do a lot of beautiful things with this you can put some grid on it for example grid on and you can label x label for example and this is your x label and what should i call it and then you can have the y label too so if you put the y label just simple put the y label and what should i call it and when you run it then you will see a lot of stuff there is grid can you see the square corner so the, it is simply separated there is x label there is y label and you can make it more beautiful so i will show you all these things later on but uh, let's move to the basics now right so uh, i want to for example separate this section from uh, this section so i will simply put the answer this double percent mean that this section is the first headline or the first um, the first portion of your code and now this is the second portion of your code so when you are running run selection and run selection it will run only this part of the code no matter what you changes you do it will not look at that portion but it will only look at this particular portion when you uh, you have this double uh, person back to back and if you want to comment something you can either use this one or you can simply click on the use the control r control r is for comment and control t control plus t is for uncomment and i don't think there are other things that are important so let's go to the plots and if you see the a and b for example if i want to see a plot uh, a versus b let me plot a if i want to plot a number i want to simply plot it i can use this one I, if i want to plot some other things there are a lot of things you can see uh, but as i told you uh, since you have the uh previous figure still existing there so it is printing on the top of it for for that sake you have to click on close all and now all the figures are clear i have clicked on a and i want to see area under the a and you can see what is the value of a and it will show you the plot of a and it will highlight the area pie chart we will see these things later on but these are the kind of plots that you can do with the uh, that you that you can do here and you can label it and do a lot of stuff there so from the plots you can see a lot of plots there you can make 3d plots and other stuff just like this there are applications you can make your own application the application making an application in matlab it's very simple you just have to get the designing app and from here you just have to click on drag and drop and you can do a lot of cool things for example this is your you know, plots to be visualized this is your button number one and this is your checkbox or this is your data picker for example you want to put something like this and you want to link everything with this figure then you just simply have to click on the callback and then add the button and here you can write the function for that button but yeah this is too early to do all this stuff we will see it later on you can create an app like this and then 
if you want to get more apps, then it will direct you to the Matchwork website. And from there, you can also download some uh, applications, for example, for a lot of stuff for using MATLAB applications, for example, for the RF mix signal, you need some application. So from here, you can download it. Some are paired and some are unpaired. And if you already have some application here from somewhere that you created earlier, you can just double click on it. You can install it and it will be visible here. And if you want to packaging, once you created, once you design your application, you can package the, that one. You can just specify that one and you can package it like this. And then you can use it in future. It will create an executable file for that one. And then you don't have to understand these one because th these are a bit for high advanced level. These are the machine learning and deep learning tool, mathematical and statistic control system, automotive. So in future, you can use all these applications. So depending on your data, for example, if I click on the curve fitting, I can get the data from my workspace. So I can, for example, get the data from my workspace and you can see that something is happening here with my A, B, and C variables, and you can see this cool 3D plot, right? So all these things you can do. Now the data is not meaningful, still it plotted it, but in future, if you do something, and it will also gives you something that you require, what is the coefficient, R square, SSE, everything. So at this stage, you don't need it. Editor. So already you saw the editor. The only important thing is this one. We already almost covered these things, but when you run it, editor will show you the result. So mostly we use this one in the editor. Publish is not important. And also view is not important. How you want to see this thing. For example, here it is single. If you want two scripts to see back to back, for example, test number one here, and then the other one here, then you can see, for example, the other one like that and you can see two windows or you can see it on top to bottom. So I'll prefer to use this one. So I think um, this is all the basics that you can do from the MATLAB. And yeah, I'll take some questions. If you have any questions with anything that I explained so far. Uh, yeah, there is one more cool thing here, this parallel. So sometimes you have the multi-threading process and you want to run that processes in parallel. So once you click on it, you can also see that parallel thing here. Then it will do the pipelining and it will make your code more faster. It will process all the parallel threads uh, together. It will process them together. So that is also a very cool tool. If you want to increase the fonts or uh, for example, now my fonts here size is 14, but I want to make it 24 so I can, Oh, I should have done it before, right? I should have done it before so that you could have seen it very clearly. Yeah, sorry for that. So you can also see everything, all the variables and all the other stuff like that. So is there any question? Please use your mic because it's hard for me to see the text. So if you have any question, you can ask me through mic. No question from anyone? Okay, so I'll wind up my lecture for today. And is there anybody who joined the class later after I started my class? So if there is someone arrived later, they can tell me and I can put their attendance. But please be on time for the next time. Is there this one guy still present? 63101 with the last four digit of the student ID. Then 1603. No. Then 1659. And 1644. So I think that is all for today. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lab. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you.